Trisha Paytas has been very vocal in the Colleen Ballinger situation, calling her out for her wrongdoings and holding her accountable. And now she's come out to give even more insight as to what Colleen was saying to her behind the scenes as everything was going down and why she feels Colleen is manipulating Jojo Siwa. Recently, Jojo Siwa had come out to defend Colleen Ballinger on the Howie Mandel podcast, saying that they've been friends since she was 12 and she really looks up to Colleen. She thinks she's a cool person and felt like the internet was running with lies about her and capitalizing on her cancellation. Trisha had previously responded to Jojo's comments, feeling like this hasn't been a cancellation, but people holding her accountable for her actions, and wanted to give some more insight in her latest podcast episode as to what Colleen said to her and why she felt like she herself had been manipulated by Colleen, and now she's manipulating Jojo. She talks about how when she confronted Colleen about what was coming out about her, and the talks of Colleen possibly having sent photos of Trisha around to young fans, making fun of her, Colleen completely tried to change the story. I was so nice about it. When I first heard the stuff about the pictures being sent to Johnny and, you know, allegedly to Adam, I, you know, I brought it up to her and she's like, oh my gosh, what? No, they were like your fans. Like they were sending me pictures. And I was like, guys, and sometimes I would do like one word response, like, okay, like, such crazy lies when she knew that this was like out there and then later confirming it to me. So it's no longer a lie. Like she confirmed this happened. So, but I was also manipulated. I was thinking like, okay. Trisha also talked about how even though Colleen was choosing not to post on her own YouTube channel while everything was happening, she kept telling Trisha that she wanted to still do their podcast. And she at first even wanted to address some things on there, but then thought about it and wanted to just come back in an episode acting nonchalant, like nothing was going on. And if they had actually done this, Trisha would have certainly been in some major hot water and probably would have gotten canceled for standing by Colleen. People were already upset at Trisha for not speaking out about what was going on with Colleen. So for her to sit down and do a whole podcast episode with her, that would have been insane. And Trisha wonders if it was Colleen's plan to have Trisha be the one to test the waters for her of whether or not, you know, she was going to get a good reaction if she came back or not, which is crazy that she would like literally throw Trisha under the bus like that. She kept pushing to come back with the podcast. And when I started like really like listening to this stuff, I was kind of like, I don't know. And like, yes, being a skeptic, being her friend, being an influencer, yes, lies are told about you. So you're just like, okay, let me like hear more. But she was constantly pushing to like do the show. We're going to come back and show them. Like we don't, and then she was like, yeah, we'll talk about it on the show was the first thing she said. Then she came back a couple weeks later, like, let's not even talk about it. We'll just come back so we can show them like, look, we're friends, like this kind of stuff. And I was like, that's when it started feeling icky to me because I'm like, why is she pushing coming back so much when she herself hasn't said anything? Me Wanting me to be the first to put out there to test the waters to see how it goes. It was so manipulative and I would just like really hate her so much for it. Tersha says that when they first started their podcast, she really just thought Colleen was so wholesome and never understood when Colleen would say that Reddit didn't like her and all of that. And she would joke with Trisha that they were going to get canceled for doing their podcast and kind of made Trisha feel like she was the problematic one, though, when they tried to pitch themselves to the podcast network that Colleen was working with. And Colleen had told Trisha that they didn't want to work with them because they didn't want to lose advertisers with Trisha's past. But obviously, we know now that Colleen was the one that really got their podcast canceled. But Trisha and Moses talked about it in the episode, how maybe Colleen always knew in the back of her mind that her past was going Going to haunt her and that's why she always joked about them getting canceled because she felt like things were going to happen and things were going to come out about her and that's why she was always making those jokes she always said like we're gonna get canceled i'm gonna get canceled like it's gonna right like i mean it always was very much that and i was like so confused like from even the first episode are we canceled are we canceled right, like yeah, we canceled I was like, yet or something and i was like yeah. girl what did you do in your past that you're so because i'm a pretty cancelable person and i was just like we're fine we're not doing anything wrong meanwhile all this i was like what still to this day well so she knew i mean somewhere in the back of her head she knew that those photos exist those text messages about you so i think it just like I don't know. I still don't understand how you go and work with somebody when you know that is there. Because the first, the mukbang in December 2020, she was very much like, oh my God, I feel like you're going to cancel me. Like, oh my God, if it ends bad, is, it, are you gonna, it's going to end so bad. And like all stuff like that. And I, I remember saying in the mukbang, like, girl, like there's, I'm not in that era of my life. Like I'm not trying to like ruin you or cancel you. And it's like weird. I was like, oh wait, she's like weirdly manifested, but it's not manifesting. She like knew all this. <laughs> 
which I remember in one of their podcast episodes, Colleen was scared that a frenemies style situation would happen and, you know, end the podcast with Trisha, ruin their friendship. And it's just crazy to know that she was sitting next to someone that she had talked badly about. Like, yeah, a falling out is bound to happen when you've got these crazy skeletons in your closet. Anyone could leak at any time. And I feel like when she was joking about it on the podcast, she was kind of making it seem like this frenemy style falling out would be at Trisha's hands. Like it would be Trisha's fault that they would fall out in some way, but it was really Colleen. And still like the fact that she even wanted to do the podcast with Trisha, that whole thing is strange to me. Like why she would even want to work with someone that she doesn't like or seem to like but there's just so many things that have been strange about Colleen and Trisha went on to talk about Jojo and Colleen's strange friendship expressing that she feels as though Jojo has been manipulated by Colleen and she feels like she can say that because she felt like Colleen was doing that to her. But the manipulation I felt by her, and I truly do, and I don't use that term loosely at all. Like I, I really don't use manipulation like loosely, but I feel like I know I was manipulated. And like, I think that's why I have so much anger still. And I feel like I, I see this almost with Jojo, like it's manipulation. She's saying, oh, these are all lies. Well, she wasn't there in the situation. She's not involved unless she was in these group chats or whatever like that, which I don't, she didn't say anything to. But the only person who could be telling you that these are lies are someone that's involved. Trisha just feels like this is why this needs to be talked about to emphasize the fact that this is not normal and people should not be friends with young fans or fans in general. The power imbalance is manipulation and it's not okay. And that's why she was so upset seeing Jojo say that people are just talking about Colleen to capitalize on the situation because Trisha feels like it's accountability, not people trying to cancel her. Jojo made me just so upset. And when they say stuff like this, she's not the first influencer to say it. Where it's like, oh, people are capitalizing off. It's like, no, people are talking about it. People who have a platform who's like, this so happens to be their job are talking about it because it's like something that's so real and, and needs to be talked about. Like I could talk about anything and make money. You know what I mean? But it's like, you can't just write off as like, oh, people are capitalizing. It's like, no, people are like raising awareness about it and keep talking about it because people think it's completely normal, apparently. Mm -hmm. And like I said, she's not the first influencer to say this, to be like, oh, I think it's gross. So she made some mistakes. So it's like this. It's like, that's that's so, what is what is wrong? That's what's wrong with the world. Trisha goes on to even talk about the way that Colleen tried to approach the situation at first to her because her and Oscar were talking about what Colleen might be saying to Jojo behind the scenes to get Jojo to the point of, wanting to defend her so publicly. And Trisha explained how in the beginning of all this, when Colleen was trying to talk to her about what was going on, she was almost like guilt tripping her in a way, coming off as really scared to lose her as a friend. So she does see how Jojo would be swayed by Colleen's words. And she kept sending me voice memos like, oh my gosh, did I lose you? Like, are you there? And it just like took a full day for me to like, and again, I'm just like someone who's like, I didn't want her to like, do anything bad to herself, right? Like I like she's like, you know, I don't have anyone and everyone probably hates me. All my friends probably hate me. They believe this stuff, you know. So so she's like, everyone, you know, is like not talking to me, whatever. So I just thought, ah, oh. so she's like telling me it's not true. She's telling me all this stuff. And then on top of that, saying that stuff, and I remember that specific one where it was like, oh no, did I lose you? And I was just like, ah, oh. uh, yeah. So it's like I know this situation and I wanted to like cut ties and it was so hard. And we always knew, we always knew the podcast wasn't coming back. Like it always was that. But she wanted it to come back so bad and wanted all this stuff to happen and just, you know, blow over. And I just, um, so I know that situation and I know it's like really tough, especially when you're so young and you're connected to the whole family. She's connected to the whole family. And it was, it was constant. It was all throughout the day, every day, you know, just getting voice memos, like so many throughout the night. And like, and in one way you do feel for her, right? Like, like I'm, I'm saying in, in like Jojo's situation, right? You're like hearing this anxiety. I could hear it voice memos all hours of the night saying, you know, she doesn't, she can't eat, doesn't see her kids. And like, and probably a lot of that is true. I'm not saying that's a manipulation tactic, but you're just like, well, I don't want this person to like hurt themselves. You know what I mean? Or, you know, with the kids and all this stuff like that. So as someone as an insider, that's what I'm saying is someone isn't like someone who's like close to you, like Jojo or any of her family, like be there for that person, but you can't make excuses. Trisha does say that she can't entirely blame Jojo for what she's said because of the fact that Colleen is in her ear. 
but that this whole thing of seeing Jojo come out and defend Colleen is the perfect example as to why the two of them should not be friends and why an adult should not be allowed to befriend kids because they are easily swayed. And yes, Jojo is an adult right now, but not at the time that they formed this friendship. I don't know 100% if I blame Jojo because she's obviously hearing it from someone and it's obviously a manipulation and you are friends with someone since you're a child. She kept reiterating, since I was 12, since this, we became friends. Yeah. It's like, that's the problem. That's the problem. You're the only one sticking up for this because you met her when you're a child and you're believing all this stuff. It's manipulation. She's hearing it from somebody saying that these are lies because there's no way I don't believe JoJo is so egotistical to things that she knows what lies are when she wasn't in that situation, you know? So to be like, oh, all these lies and stuff like that, just crediting actual facts that are out there that have presented themselves is insane to me. It's crazy and it just screams manipulation and it's the number one reason I feel like everyone show, saw it. It's like, this is why you're not, you shouldn't be friends with a minor. It's just so crazy to hear what Colleen was saying to Trisha behind the scenes, the whole guilt tripping, did I lose you? I can't imagine what she's been saying to Jojo then. And clearly Jojo is buying into it. It's just sad, all of it. And maybe Jojo will realize what's happening one of these days, but until then, it seems like Trisha will be trying her best to explain to her the things that are wrong about the situation through her videos. But that is what she had to say as of right now. Let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments. I love you guys so much, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye, guys.